Hello everybody, so today we're looking at um, elements, compounds and mixtures, that chapter, and I've divided this chapter up into four headings, definitions, differences, how they are represented in a, a diagram, and also I want to discuss molecules and compounds, which isn't strictly on the course, but I feel it does help your overall understanding for, um, for chemistry. Okay, so let's start off the definitions. Well, the definitions are just something you need to learn off by heart. There's no getting around that. Okay, you have three of them. Um, elements, compound, and a mixture. So an element is a substance that cannot be broken up into simpler substances by chemical means. Uh, and we know elements are all found in the periodic table. So if you were given something, a name of something, and you weren't sure if it was an element, or, or maybe it was a compound, you, d you just didn't know, well, then you check the periodic table there, and you see if it's um if it's there if it's present then yes it's an element if it's not then it's not an element it's probably a compound like for instance you'll see oxygen over here whereas you wouldn't see water okay because water is not an element it is a compound a compound and you must be very clear on this definition is two or more different elements chemically combined in other words if we had to have a compound there, an example of a compound would be H2O. And if we're looking at it, we have a hydrogen element there, and we have an oxygen element here. Okay, so we have two or more different elements chemically combined. Say, for argument's sake, I didn't have H2O, and I did, we say, oxygen gas, the gas that we inhale. So we said O2. In this case here, we only have one element present. Yes, there's two, two of them, there's two oxygens. Um, we can see here, but there's only one element present here, okay? So therefore, that O2 is not a compound, okay? That's really, really important, and it's actually classified as a, a molecule, and I'll discuss that um, at a later stage. Okay, so a compound are two or more different elements chemically combined. You must get that one word perfect. Actually, all three of these need to be word perfect for that matter. And then a mixture are just two or more elements mingled together, but not chemically combined. Okay, so it's like when you did the iron sulfide experiment. You put um, sulfur and iron together, and you just mixed them up. Okay, they were mingled together. That was a mixture then. You had a mixture of iron, and you had a mixture of sulfur. Okay, and it wasn't until you had to heat it up using a Bunsen burner that you chemically combined it. So we changed it from a mixture into a compound. Okay, um, so look, there are just the definitions, guys, you need to know. Um, there's no um, getting around the definitions, really. You just need to learn them off by heart. Okay, the differences. Well, they love asking this, okay? And it's not specifically clear on how many differences you need to know. Uh, but I usually recommend for my own girls there to learn off at least the minimum two. Definitely two. But if you can, learn them all off. Now, I always um, tell my girls here for this... Ignore the mixture side, just learn off the compounds, and then you're going, to, you're going to say the exact opposite. So, for instance, a compound is a single substance, but therefore a mixture is not a single substance. It consists of more than one substance. A compound requires heat, or some form of energy, usually it's heat, 99% um, of the times, to make. Okay, think of your iron sulfide. We couldn't do that without, um, without applying heat to it. And therefore, a mixture obviously does not require any energy to make. A compound, it's difficult to separate the substances, um, not the substances, it's difficult to separate the elements in a compound. So, for instance, once you have the likes of H2O, water, okay, it's difficult to separate those out. Whereas a mixture, it's very easy to separate them out. So let's go back to our earlier example, you know, the experiment that you would have done. By the way, if you want to revise the experiments, I have an experiment booklet in the conical flask under the chemistry section there or not the chemistry section under the geocycle science uh, and you'll see um you, sh you should see it there um anyhow getting back to this here uh, the iron sulfide is very difficult to separate whereas if we had the iron filings and the sulfur just mingled together we can separate them easily enough we can just use a magnet um and finally then the properties of the reactants dif are different to that of the compound and therefore, obviously, the mixtures, the properties of the mixture are similar to those in the mixture. Now, the students get confused with this one over here. So I always use a, a simple example, and that's actually going back to water, H2O. So we write down H2O here. So 
Water consists of two elements, okay, hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen, okay, that looks like an awful Y, but anyhow. Um, and if we think about it there, um, how do these guys differ to this overall? Well, water is a liquid, and yet hydrogen and oxygen are both gases. So straight away, they are not even talking about their chemical properties, but their physical properties are, are different. Because hydrogen and oxygen are gases, and yes, when you combine them, they make a liquid. Secondly, hydrogen is actually um, used as, rock, as rocket fuel, okay? A part of it, anyhow, okay? Because it's really, really, really explosive. And oxygen is really, really flammable, okay? In fact, if you want a fire to take place, you have, um, you have to have oxygen present. And yes, when you mix the two, when you combine, chemically combine the two of them together, you make water. And water actually puts out fires. Excuse me. So you have um, very different chemicals, um, the elements in terms of the properties, sorry. You have very different um, properties in terms of the elements and when they combine the compound. Another one you can think of is CO2. Uh, CO2. Okay, so we have carbon and we have oxygen. Now we said this already, um, oxygen is a gas, okay? Carbon dioxide is definitely a gas, we exhale it. But carbon itself, this is actually a solid. It's actually a black, um, a sooty um, solid. Okay, so we have a solid and when that combines with a gas, it forms another gas, okay? The compound CO2, okay? Um, so that's just an, another example of a difference there. Okay, how are they represented in a diagram? Well, this was, came up um, in the 2019 um, sample paper from the SEC. So it didn't come up in a state exam, but it was a sample paper. It was tricky enough, um, um, this question actually, to be fair. Now there's two parts to us. You would have seen it before in the materials chapter where you had to um, state whether a to E was a solid, liquid, or gas. Okay, so what I did, I just removed that part of it, and now we're just going to focus on if it's an element, compound, or mixture. We were already told that A is a mixture. Okay, so let's figure out the rest of them. Okay, um, first off, I think the easiest one, uh, easiest way to represent these is obviously that each type of atom represents a color. So if we look at D there, there's only one atom. Present or one type, not one atom present, there's obviously more than one atom present, there's loads there, but there's only one type of atom present. So go back up to your definitions. A compound is two or more different elements, a mixture, two or more elements. So for both compound and, compound and mixture, you require two or more elements. So for D, there's only one type of um, element here. So therefore, D, um, we can represent that straight away as an element. Okay, next. Um, if we're looking at B. And if we look at B, every single one of these has a red and a yellow combined. Chemically combined. Okay, and we can, we can argue that they're chemically combined is because they're all the same and as in like they're red and yellow and that there's two of them okay two or more um, elements different elements chemically combined so these are all different elements here okay so B is um, a compound and if we look at C again we, we're representing um, the blue and the grey there and we can see that they're, um, they're all the same, blue and greys, blue and two greys to be um, precise about us. And in that case there, we can assume that's a compound. And again, think of your definition for this. A compound is two or more, or more, so there could be three, which there is here, or actually there's two, excuse me, there's two elements here. There's a grey and there's a, a blue. So two or more different elements chemically combined. And they're all the same. Now E. E looks very similar to B, okay? And the reason so is because they're both gases, okay? And we would have discussed that in the materials chapter, okay? So from that, I'd be thinking that E 
was in fact a compound because they're pretty much the exact same. But then I looked a little bit closer and if you look a little bit closer, you can see here that yes, you have some red and yellows, red and yellows, red and yellows, but you also have, if you look carefully, you have two yellows combined. Let's go back up to our definition. A compound is two or more different elements chemically, chemically combined. Well, in that case here, this could not be a compound. So this could not be a compound because, yes, you have some of them being different, but you have a lot of them there um, not different from one another. So therefore, we can argue there that it's going to have to be a mixture. And again, it couldn't be an element because an element requires there to be only one type of colour pre present. Okay, colour representing a type of atom. So uh, in this case here, it's going to be a mixture. Now that was tricky enough, to be fair. Uh, it just required a little bit of um, extra thinking. Now, let's go on to the next one. Molecules and compounds. So this strictly isn't on the course, at least it's not very obvious if it is or, or isn't, for that matter, but I'm going to teach it anyhow, because I feel that students definitely need to know it um, for going into fifth and sixth year for chemistry. But not only that, it does help to round off your, um, your learning in terms of um, elements, compounds and mixtures. So you can see here I introduced a new word, a molecule. And if we look at it, they're very similar. Compounds and mixture, or, sorry, compounds and molecules are very similar. The difference being we have the word element up on top here. And down here we have the word atom. Okay, well I kind of alluded to this early on. And I'm going to use um, water as an example. So H2O. And we're going to use oxygen gas. Oxygen gas, by the way, everybody, is O2. Okay, oxygen is O, but oxygen gas is O2. That's really important. Um, okay, so if we look at, um, let's see, I'll use a different colour for this one here. If we look at H2O here, ask yourself here, how many um, elements are present? Well, if we're looking at it here, there's a hydrogen and then there's an oxygen. So we have two elements present. So two elements. Now, so therefore, H2O is, and they're different elements, okay, H2O is um, a compound. Let's look at this in a little bit more depth. How many atoms are present? Well, if we're looking at it there, there are three atoms present. You have two hydrogens and one oxygen. So two hydrogens, that's what the small two means, in terms of, um, excuse me, it just means the, um, the number of, um, of atoms of that element. Okay, so in this compound here, every compound of water, okay, consists of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atoms. So there are three atoms in total. Now a molecule is two or more atoms chemically combined. So H2O is a molecule. So three atoms, it's a molecule, and it's also a compound, which is perfectly fine to guess. So a compound. Let's look at O2. Well, if we're looking at it there, we can see that there is one element present, one type of element present, and that's oxygen. And if we go into a little bit more detail, okay, we can see that there are how many atoms? There are two atoms. Okay, so in this case here, O2 is a, co um, a compound, excuse me, is a molecule. So that's the difference there, okay? Um, just double check when you're going through it, um, if it has more than one element and how many atoms. And don't forget to separate the two of them because they are kind of different. The elements being the letters, okay? And uh, um, the numbers that go with us, they, they're what we associate with atoms. Okay, we don't put small ones there or anything like that. Okay, we just, it's like when you're doing algebra. Okay, we don't, we never put in one X. We just put an X. So we assume the one is there. Okay, so there are three atoms here. Two plus one is three. In this case here, there are two atoms. If I was going to look at um, another one in, let me think, um, ah, glucose. Glucose is C6H12O6. Okay, so we have to ask ourselves there. How many atoms are we dealing with and how many um, elements? So we'll start off with elements like we did with the last of them. 
Well, if we look at it, there's a carbon element, there's a hydrogen element, and there's an oxygen element. So therefore, there are three elements. Grand. How many atoms? So there are six carbon atoms, there are 12 hydrogen atoms, and there are six oxygen atoms. So 6 plus 6 is 12, and 12 plus 12 is 24. So there are 24 atoms. So glucose is both a compound and a molecule. Okay, certainly um, um, both of those. So guys, I hope that helped um, in terms of explanations. So the definitions you did need to learn off. I would expect you guys to know at least a minimum of two differences. Um, but you could be asked more. It's just We just don't know. Um, number three there is how they're represented in the diagram. And they can be tricky. So they do require a little bit of practice. There isn't too many questions out there at the moment to honest. Um, but I, hopefully in the upcoming years there will be a few more for you to practice with. And then finally the molecules and compounds. Uh, which I think is an important part of chemistry uh, in terms of rounding up your education and your learning when it comes to elements, compounds and mixtures. Okay everybody, look, I hope that helped with your studies and I'll be doing a few more videos of different um, areas in chemistry very soon.